Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel and this is the LG SL9YG soundbar. I got a chance to test this soundbar for the past two weeks and this is quite a slick looking soundbar. Before we go further, let's look at the unboxing first, shall we? And the unboxing is pretty straightforward. We have the soundbar itself, very nice and slick and modern look. We also have the accessories box which houses first the remote control and I really like the remote control, it's very simple and minimalist and there's also a dedicated Google Assistant button because the soundbar has Google Assistant built in which is simply marvellous. We also have the power cord and they also include the optical cable. Sadly, there isn't any HDMI cable uh, which means you need to get your own HDMI cable. As for the subwoofer, once I get it out by just simply wriggling out from the box, you can actually see that the soundbar is pretty simple. I have to say, this is a subwoofer with 220 watts of power, pretty slim and pretty lightweight for a subwoofer. So this is the rest of the product highlights. At the back of the soundbar, the connection is uh, there's two. Uh, HDMI 1 is the output to your TV using ARC. They also include an optional HDMI input if you want to connect your game console or your cable TV box directly into the soundbar. You can use the uh, additional HDMI input. If you guys do not have ARC on your TV, do not worry. You can always use the optical cable to connect to the optical source. Most TVs will have that optical source if the guys, if your TV, sorry, do not have ARC. For the subwoofer pairing, it is pretty automatic. Just simply power it up and you will pair with the soundbar automatically. If it doesn't pair, do not worry. Just simply press the pairing button, wait for the light to go green and you're good to go. For the setup, it's using the Google Home application, which means it's going to be a breeze. I love the Google Home application. It's pretty easy to use. So simply fire up the Google Home app and then connect it by using the setup device option and the uh, app will actually automatically find the soundbar because I have the dedicated because I have a, an existing home app set up I can simply use the existing home account and it will look for the LG soundbar using the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi combination once you have found the soundbar just simply confirm it by, by selecting it and going and pressing next and thus it will look for the soundbar the soundbar indicator will also flash the Wi-Fi signal to indicate that it is connected and you're pretty much good to go. Next is where you assign the soundbar to your room because this is in my living room. I'm simply going to put it in the living room segment. And of course, it's software updates. Make sure you connect and update the latest software to allow you to have the seamless connection and usage. So on the TV side, you need to actually configure it a little bit more. You need to select the sound settings and make sure that the sound settings pointed towards the HDMI input or ARC or something similar. Now let's take a look at the performance of the sound bar, shall we? for both of those to get your portrait on. And on the 11, since it only has the wide and the telephoto, both of those will work with portrait mode and they'll work with anything, not just faces. So in our 10S final review, you smile back at me and you face the other sun. Now I'm waiting here for someone. Hey, 
There are a few drivers that mix up the soundbar and these are the following speaker drivers. There's actually a 2 times 50 watts of front speaker, 50 watts times 2 of top speaker and there's 40 watts of surround speakers plus of course the 220 watts of subwoofer which brings you a total of 500 watts of total power. If you're not satisfied with the sound, you can actually adjust it through the app. Just download the LG Wi-Fi app and you can actually adjust an array of selection right over here as seen on the screen. If you do not wish to use the app, the remote control can also be used to adjust by simply pressing the settings button. And then of course you can go ahead and adjust exactly what is seen on the app. And this is rather useful because you don't really need to have the phone or the mobile device to keep on adjusting the sound settings. The LG soundbar also features Bluetooth or Wi-Fi and also supports the Google Cast streaming. So if you've got apps like Spotify or Tidal, simply click on the uh, Google Cast button and it will stream quite easily. And because it's also using the Google Home app, you can also assign rooms and multi-zones. So a lot of people do not know this. You can actually use multi-room setup through the Google Home app. Just simply add a group, create a speaker group rather. Right now in the screen, as you can see, I actually created a group before, which consists of the LG soundbar and my Google Home Mini. And once you play it through that particular group, you can even uh, adjust the volume up to your dedicated zone. So that is something useful that you may want to learn. Overall, I really like the LG soundbar. The uh, sound quality is actually quite good for movies and music. Although the bass was a bit disappointing at times, the design of soundbar is pretty sleek as well. I like it. It's quite modern. It will fit on your TV console or match with TV quite easily. The Google Home app integration is one of my favorite ways of setting up devices and the soundbar has that, which is pretty neat. The price is actually at only 899 US dollars. It's about Singapore dollars 1200. This is actually a superb value for any home theater setup. And uh, the two things that I would like it to improve is the subwoofer quality performance and also the low volume quality. So that's pretty much it actually. This is my final thoughts on the SL9YG soundbar. Do make sure you subscribe and like the video for more videos in the near future. This is Fat Mastro signing off. You guys have a pleasant day ahead. Goodbye and good day to you. Thank <laughs> you.